Hello, Math Talino students! Welcome to our Math Talino tutorial. Ngayong araw, ang pag-aaralan natin ay tungkol sa rational numbers. What is a rational number? A rational number is any number that can be expressed in the form a 1 over b, where a and b are integers and b should not be equal to 0. So, in the form of our rational number, a 1 over b, a is our numerator and b is our denominator. So, pag sinabi natin rational number, Ito ay any number na pwede nating isulat in fraction form. But remember, the denominator should not be equal to 0 because division by 0 is undefined. So here are some examples of rational numbers. 3 fifths, 9 fifths, negative 7 all over 6, 5 and 3 fourths, and negative 10. In the first example, it is a proper fraction because the numerator is less than your denominator. The second one is an improper fraction because the numerator is larger than the denominator. In the third one, we have a negative improper fraction. And in the fourth one, we have a mixed fraction or mixed number. And in the last one, we have a negative integer. Based on the definition, natural numbers represented by n are also rational numbers. Why? The set of natural numbers contains the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. But, these elements can be written as n equals to the set 1 all over 1, 2 all over 1, 3 all over 1, 4 all over 1, and 5 all over 1. Because, any natural number has always a denominator of 1. Next is, whole numbers, represented by letter W. These are also rational numbers. Why? Because W is the set containing the elements 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So the whole number includes 0 as well as the natural numbers. And this set of whole numbers can be written as 0 all over 1, 1 all over 1, 2 all over 1, 3 all over 1, 4 all over 1 and 5 all over 1. Notice that in 0, we can write it as 0 over 1 because 0 divided by 1 is still equal to 0. And also, the integers represented by the letter Z are also rational numbers. The set of integers contains the elements from the negative infinity up to the positive infinity. So we have negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So these are only some of the integers. But this set of integers can be rewritten as negative 3 all over 1, negative 2 all over 1, negative 1 all over 1, 0 over 1, 1 over 1, 2 all over 1, and 3 all over 1, and so on. So, the same with natural numbers and whole numbers, any integer has always a denominator of 1. So, let's have a diagram that would represent the relationship of those set of numbers, the natural numbers, whole numbers, and integers in the set of rational numbers. First, we have the set of natural numbers. 
one, two, three, and so on. And it is contained in a larger set, which is the whole numbers. Because whole numbers include already the number zero. And these two sets, the whole numbers and natural numbers, are also contained in a larger set, which is called the set of integers. So we have included already the negative integers, the whole number, and the natural number in the set of integers. And a much larger set that would contain the set of integers, whole numbers, and natural numbers would be the set Q. And the set Q is the set of rational numbers. Okay, so now, how to arrange or order rational numbers? Let's have the following examples. If the fractions have the same denominator, the one with bigger numerator is larger. So let's have an example for this one. Arrange the following fractions in increasing order. So based on the statement above, if the denominators are the same, in our case, the denominators of the set of fractions given are all 13. So we have the same denominators. So to compare or to arrange these fractions in increasing order, we only have to examine the numerators. So titingnan na natin yung numerators. Let's start with the smallest one because we are going to arrange this one in increasing order or mula sa pinakamaliit papunta sa pinakamalaking rational number. So the first one should be 3 over 13. Next is 5 all over 13. The third one is 6 all over 13. The fourth one is 9 all over 13. And the last one is 12 all over 13. Let's have the second one. If the fractions have the same numerator, the one with the smaller denominator is larger. Kapag naman pareho ang ating numerator, titignan lang natin yung denominators at kung aling denominators ang pinakamaliit, yun yung may largest value. So, halimbawa, arrange the following set of fractions in increasing order. Kung titignan natin, pareho ang kanilang numerators. So, ang gagawin natin, the one with larger denominator is considered as smaller. And the one with the smaller denominator is considered as larger. So, starting from the smallest rational number, we have 17 all over 11. Next is 17 all over 9. The third one is 17 all over 8. The fourth one is 17 all over 5. And the last one is 17 all over 3. So that is how we arrange this set of fractions from smallest to largest. What about if our fraction has neither same numerators nor same denominators? So when neither the denominators nor the numerators are the same, use the cross product method. So to illustrate this method, let's have an example. Which is larger, 7 9 or 8 over 11? So we have 7 all over 9 and 8 over 11. So in doing cross product method, all we have to do is multiply the denominator of the first fraction to the numerator of the second. 
and also the denominator of the second to the numerator of the first. 9 times 8, you have 72. And 7 times 11 is equal to 77. Since 77 is larger than 72, therefore, we conclude that 7 9 is larger than 8 over 11. So, we can write 7 9 larger than 8 over 11. Okay, let's have the second one. Which is larger? 3 fifths or 7 tenths? So we do the same procedure. We have 3 fifths and we have 7 tenths. We do the cross product method. So 5 times 7 is 35 and 3 times 10 is equal to 30. Kung titignan natin, ang 35 ay mas malaki kay 30. Ibig sabihin, yung fraction na 7 tenths ay mas malaki kay 3 fifths. So, pwede natin isulat. 3 fifths is less than 7 over 10. Hanggang dyan na lang ang ating Magdalino Tutorial. Sana po ay may natutunan kayo ngayon. Salamat po sa pakikinig.